Hi everyone, here's my top 10 clutch goals of the last 40 years. Back to love it, Murray. He goes short. It's a mark to Zaharakis. Zaharakis has kicked the goal. The Bombers are in front of the G. Um, yeah, number 10, Chris Grant from the Western Bulldogs. Uh, Bruin Essendon's perfect season. Um, I think it was round 21 of 2000 and Essendon were probably going to be the only side ever to be undefeated in a season and yeah, left foot snap from the boundary just ruined Essendon's hopes of having a perfect season and yeah, it was a great goal. I mean, I think he had a good, good, good game that day and um, yeah, just kicked the goal on his left and sealed the victory. No, he can't. He's missed he can't everything. Score. Off hands, Fletcher out in the full. It is two. Out on the full from Fletcher. This is the sort of goal that the champ might kick here. Will I reckon he that stung will him he... a bit and he wants these. He, he hit a banana or will he run out onto the left foot? This is where Hudson was last week, exactly the same spot. 36th position. Go the left foot. He kicked the goal to bring him back into the game. Got it's it. a Got great it. kick. He's kicked it. A magnificent effort. Number nine, Justin Longmuir from uh, Fremantle. Um, yeah, shot after the siren against St Kilda at Subiaco. I think it was a Friday night. I remember that watching as a kid at home. Um, and yeah, just a remarkable goal. I mean, when the siren goes, that's all the pressure comes on you, the whole crowd in front of your home crowd. And then you see when he kicks it, he runs straight to the side and um, just hugs the supporters and all the players come and jump on him. And yeah, it was probably a special moment for him in his career. And yeah, it was a good goal. 33 seconds to go. September action. In comes Longmuir to take his kick. Oh, ice cool. Ice cool. Fremantle have won after the siren. Look at that. Number eight, Peter Riccardi. Um, I think it was in his last year against uh, Carlton um, at the Dome. He marked it on the 50 and probably he had to kick the best he could ever kick in his life to probably kick that goal. I mean, 50 metres out. Um, you got your legs are about 30 year old and he kicked it off his boot and actually went straight right and then the swing of the ball actually brought it back and I can't believe how far it came back. It probably moved about 10 metres in the air and everyone was on the goal line and it just cleared the hands and yeah, great moment for him. I think, yeah, as I said, he's in the last year of footy and to kick a goal like that for Geelong to beat Carlton, I mean, anyone's happy to beat Carlton any time and to do it after the sirens, a great moment. Misses the body with the handball. Now Clark, short ball, got a target. Riccardi. Riccardi taken the mark inside the 50. It is in good hands. It is in good hands. The I've got to tell you. It's going to sound, Gary. This shot on goal will be after the siren, and he has to kick it for the Cats to win. There it is. The fate of the match riding on Peter Riccardi. It leaves the boot. It's swinging back. Number seven, Ben Dixon um, at the MCG in 2001 um, against Carlton again, another one against Carlton. Um, I think it was 90-93 the score was at that stage and they kicked the ball down and Dixon's taken a great pack mark and the siren's gone as he's walked back and the commentators are all up and about and I think by the time he actually went to kick it there was about 15 Carlton players all around him on the mark and the amount of pressure that was on him that day would have been, just been enormous and to go back and slot that goal was just great and as you saw on the video that all the players went around him and Hawthorne supporters were going crazy so that was a great moment. Chick plays on, seconds only remaining, they've got to take a mark. Yeah! Dixon has taken a mark with five seconds remaining. The siren will go. Oh dear, what a climax to round 17. Dixon, oh, with eight dear. or nine Carlton players all oh. around him on the mark. They look doing a war dance. This is crazy, he says. He shoots for goal. He kicks the goal, and Hawthorne wins the game. Unbelievable scenes here at the MCG. Number six was Gary Buccanara, 1987 prelim. I think Hawthorne had been behind all day, and they needed, I think, four or five seconds to get the ball down from one end to the other, kick in. 
they kicked it in, Swab then marked it, handballed it off and they kicked it down to Buckinara and he's marked on the 50 and probably had to take his best effort from there and Jim Steins actually crossed the mark and gave away a 15 metre penalty and then um, Siren's gone, he's, he's gone back and to get him in a grand final, I mean that's the ultimate probably pressure besides kicking after the Siren in a grand final to win the game. So to do that and go back and kick the goal and yeah that's, that's a pretty special moment in football and um, yeah one probably a lot of Hawthorne, Hawthorne supporters will never forget. A long kick taken by Swab, plays on. Langford comes out with the ball, drives it down. Buccanau, a trip. Buccanau is free kick. Siren sounds. There's the siren, and he's got a kick from 55 metres out. I don't think that... It's 15, 15 metres! 15! What pressure on Gary Buccanara. He is a champion. He is a great kick. If he kicks this goal, Hawthorne are in the grand final. The umpires haven't heard it yet, I don't think. If he kicks this goal, Hawthorne are in the 1987 grand final. If he misses, Melbourne are in. There's the kick. It's a goal. It's a goal. Hawthorne have won with a kick after the siren. What a performance. A magnificent performance this by Hawthorne. Poor old Melbourne. You've got to, the hearts go out to the Melbourne Football Club. Number five of Billy Brownless, 94 qualifying final for Geelong. Um, yeah, it's been replayed all my childhood. I know that on footy shows and all that around. And he's taken the mark 40 metres out, gone back directly in front, and the siren's gone. And yeah, once again, all the pressure then comes on you, and everyone goes and stands the mark. And there's about 10, 10 guys on the mark, and he just goes back and coolly as you like, just slots a goal. And you see the camera goes back to him, he's just running about 20 metres on his own and just he can't control his emotions and yeah he kicks the goal and gets him into a prelim and yeah great moment for Geelong Footy Club. He's got to play on and they've got to take a mark. It's got to be Abbott or Brownlee. Oh, oh what a finish. Eight seconds left. If, if he kicks a down, point, if he kicks a point it'll be another time. Oh, oh, don't tell me. Oh the siren's gonna sound. Oh. The siren. How'd you like that for pressure? <laughs> A rock and rolling season, down and out, and back he comes. Can he finish it off with a goal? Billy, you are king of the world. The monkey's off the back, Billy. Number four, Lance Franklin, buddy. Um, there's actually three here from Colthorns. They like kicking goals after the siren or on the siren. And Buddy's was, uh, I think, it was his seventh goal for the day against uh, Adelaide in the 2007 elimination final, I think it was. So, um, yeah, I mean... He was a great player, he was only 21 years old I think back then, so to be a young kid and put all that pressure on you of kicking six goals and to kick the seventh to, to win him an elimination final is, is great and I mean the ball just comes sweet off the boot, just went straight through the middle as soon as he kicked it and he knew it and there's a great picture that Buddy celebrating, all the Hawthorne fans are in the background just all up in the air on the seats and celebrating, so that's a great finals moment for Hawthorne, another one. Fans. Screaming. Oh, oh there it is. You call it, Luke. There it is. Lance Franklin has marked 47 from goal. <laughs> Can't be long left. Franklin's kick six. This to put the Hawks in front with just a few seconds left in the elimination <laughs> final. Lance Franklin. Oh, what an inspiration. Lucky seven. Number three, James Heard, 2004. Had to get the coach in. Um, I think that week he'd been pillared um, in the newspaper all week about the umpire scenario and that kind of thing and um, I was actually in Adelaide for the game in 2004, I was playing a basketball tournament and we left um, just halfway through the first quarter and the Bombers were up 48 nothing and kicked the first eight goals of the game and I thought, oh how easy is this being a Bomber supporter, great win and all of a sudden went and played basketball, come back to the hotel room and it was I think 131 all after that and we were thinking what the hell's going on and and then, yeah, Jimmy Hurd just comes off the pack and robes it and kicks a banana from the boundary line and goes and hugs a, a bloke um, who actually lives probably five minutes away from me at the moment. So he's from Greensboro, he's a local boy. And, um, yeah, it's a great moment for the footy club to, to win a game like that, especially when your captain does that for the footy side. And, yeah, he's done a lot of goals like that over his career, but that's one of the special ones. Shot at the bottom of the pack. It's a bounce. James Hurd got that ball out of the centre bounce. He's moving down towards this contest. If anybody's going to get it, it'll be James. McDougal heads for the boundary line. Maybe Murphy should have kicked. 
Bullen. Number two, Nick Davis, um, semi-final in 2005. Um, probably the greatest ever individual five minutes of a footballer um, ever. Uh, he kicked four goals in five minutes and got Sydney single-handedly into a prelim um, final. And um, that's why I put that goal in. It's, it was a great goal off the pack, but what he did before that is kick four goals in five minutes. And um, he just probably had, yeah, the greatest ever five minutes of any player in, in the history of the game where um, single-handedly won his side of the game and the, pack, the left foot snap, it's just a great goal and all the Sydney supporters, great for the, for the side, they hadn't won a premiership in 40 years, 50 years, so um, yeah, it's great for them and it was great for him. My number one, no real surprise, it's been replayed many years in football, 1976, Malcolm Blight, the torpedo, the 80 metre torpedo, the most famous torpedo ever in football and um, yeah, Siren's gone, Optus Oval, North Melbourne, goes back from, yeah, as I said, 80 metres and the amount of height he gets on that footy and the kick, I don't know if anyone's probably ever repeated a top like that, I mean, the guys, a lot of guys can kick the ball a long way but Malcolm Bight just connects sweetly with that ball and just goes straight through the middle. It's hard to control the top when you kick it like that and he just kicks it straight through the middle and wins in the game and yeah, as I said, that's probably the most famous top ever in AFL history. To the ball, Melbourne up towards centre, half forward. There's no mark yes. That's Malcolm Bight once again. Malcolm Bight has got the ball at centre, half forward. 28 minutes gone. The crowd's gone mad. There's the siren. I think the siren's gone. Now Blight will have to take his kick. Now Blight would have to kick this. Oh, he'd have to kick it 85, 90 metres. Not over yet. What drama here at Prince's Park. Malcolm Blight, it's a big kick. It's a mammoth kick. Oh, well, I've seen it all now. I have seen it all.